In learning outcome number two, we're going to be talking about the first type of joint based on the structure, which is the fibrous joints. Again, we're starting with the fibrous joints, which were the first type of classification based on the structure. These are joints in which the neighboring bones are going to be joined together by this solid mass of dense irregular connective tissue. Now this connective tissue, it can vary from being a small fibrous strand of connective tissue to a very large thick band to an even bigger extensive membranous sheet. There are three types of fibrous joints as we can see over here. We're gonna have the sutures, the syndesmosis, and the interosseous membranes. Starting with suture, which is this fibrous joint that's going to be composed of a very thin layer of dense irregular connective tissue that's actually called a sutural ligament. Remember that it's called a ligament because it will connect two bones. Sutures we've covered already, but they are found only between bones of the skull. An example would be the coronal suture, which is this one right over here between the frontal and the parietal bones. Notice how between the bones there's going to be this irregular sort of interlocking edges of sutures that will also be important because it will give this joint an added strength and also decrease their chance of fracture. Now sutures are joints that form as these numerous bones of the skull, they're going to come in contact during development. They are immovable or slightly movable joints. In older individuals, the sutures are going to be immovable, therefore a synarthrosis type of joint. But in infants and children, they're slightly movable, therefore amphiarthrosis, as the bones are not fully formed to provide the space between them to allow the brain to grow as the infant develops into an adult. And these spaces are called fontanelles, which we have already covered in a previous module. Therefore, we can summarize that sutures play an important role as these sites of growth during development and also as shock absorption in the skull. Some sutures, although present during growth of the skull, are going to be replaced by bone in an adult, and such a suture is called a synostosis, or a bony joint, which is a joint in which there is this complete fusion of two separate bones into one. For example, the frontal bone, as we can see over here, they are made of two halves that will eventually join together across a suture line, and usually they're going to be completely fused around age six and the suture becomes obscure meaning that it will not be noticeable if the suture does persist beyond age six it is going to be called a frontal suture which will also be an immovable joint or a synarthrosis type of joint the next type of fibrous joint is what we call a syndesmosis where syndesmo means band or ligament and it will differ from the suture by having a greater distance between the two articulating joints, and therefore it will have a more dense irregular connective tissue that's going to be arranged in a bundle between them. Therefore, this joint will permit limited movement, which is considered an amphiarthrosis. One example of the syndesmosis is the distal tibiofibular joint, like the name says, is going to be a joint between the tibia and the fibula, and you're going to have the anterior tibiofibular ligament highlighted here, which will connect the tibia and the fibula. And notice how this ligament is broader compared to the suture. Another example of syndesmosis is what we call a gonfosis, and in humans, the only example of this joint are going to be the articulation between the roots of the teeth and their sockets. Now notice how the root of the teeth form these cone-shaped pegs, and the sockets are going to be formed by the dental alveoli, which is going to be located in the alveolar process of either the maxilla or the mandible. 
Now the dense irregular connective tissue between a tooth and its socket is the thin periodontal ligament or membrane and a healthy gonfasis will permit this minute shock absorbing movements. Therefore, it's also considered an amphiarthrosis. And this is why it's very important for you to use dental floss besides brushing your teeth because there's this space present here and it can accumulate food, as you can imagine. Now, if you have an inflammation and degeneration of the gums, of the periodontal ligament, and of the bone, this will be called a periodontal disease. However, like I said, you can avoid this disease by using dental floss on a daily basis. The final category of fibrous joint is what we call the interosseous membrane. And interosseous membrane is going to be this substantial sheet of dense irregular connective tissue that will bind, as we can see over here, neighboring long bones, and it will permit slight movement. Therefore, it's also characterized as an amphiarthrosis. There are two principal interosseous membrane joints in the human body. One is going to occur between the radius and the ulna in the forearm, and the other occurs between the tibia and the fibula in the leg, as we can see on these images. These strong connective tissue sheets not only help hold the adjacent long bones together, but they will also play this important role in basically defining the range of motion between these neighboring bones. And also they will provide an increased attachment surface for muscles that produce movements of the digits of the hand in case of the interosseous membrane that's present in the forearm or of the foot, in this case over here, for this interosseous membrane that's present between the fibula and the tibia. And we can see right over here, the tibialis posterior, which is this muscle on the leg that's utilizing the interosseous membrane to be able to attach in this area.